welcome to my channel family I'm sending you peace love and happiness to whatever part of the world whatever language you speak whatever time zone you're in and whatever frame of mind you are in today this is life of interruptions and before we move on can I remind you to please like subscribe and hit that notification bell I am Pearl Osa and today we are talking about weight loss and body image big deal big 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 deal I have struggled with weight and my sense of self and my body from as soon as I could be conscious. You know, as soon as I hit those teens, I was conscious about this stuff. I was never good enough for myself. And I'm sharing this because I know it's not just my story. And I'm sure many people want to know how I got over it, um, why should it matter, etc. You know, my issue started in my teens, as I said, and it was a number of reasons. Number one, I took my shape from my father's side of the family not really nice yeah and my mom is this hourglass my dad used to call her his coca-cola bottle i mean she was just she turned heads wherever she went um i remember being in varsity and uh some friends of mine were driving and she was crossing the street and the older brother looks at this woman crossing the street and says oh, look at that lady and look at her legs and then the younger brother looks up from whatever he was doing and says hey that's pearl's mom you know so she'd always been a stunner and I had always been compared to that. I'd be talking to someone and she would walk past and all the conversation stopped and everyone would, you know, follow my mom. And so I had to live up to that. And then I got into high school and high school was just mean. Children were just mean. I remember a time my diary went missing where I had written obviously my personal thoughts. I had written my poetry. I had drawn pictures and some child or someone, um, stole my diary read it and when they were done they put it in a place i could find it and they didn't just leave it like that they left it with really mean stuff written in it and i mean at that age those sorts of things stung and they spoke specifically about my body image they were like you pot-bellied fool blah 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 wherever you are watching now i love you god bless you i'm okay um so there was all sorts of things to, to contend with. And then I hit my young adulthood, you know, like late teens. And I remember someone who was really, really uh, precious to me at the time saying, you're, 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 you're a beautiful girl. You could be stunning, stunning. These are the exact words. You could be stunning, stunning if you just lost a bit of weight. So my body was always that hindrance to make it over the finishing line. And the enemy just had me focusing on, I mean, at the end of the day, this body is going to go um, in the soil, under soil, you know, dust to ashes, I'll return to dust and, and that ceases to be important. And what's important is my spirit. What's important is my heart, my character, um, and how I treat the people around me. But at that time in growing up, I didn't know because everyone made such a big deal about the physical and not in a nice way. And so I hung on to these, um, you know, impressions and perceptions of myself and they stuck and they stung and I was never good enough. Forward to when I had children and then I would notice either my children saying something negative about themselves or about each other or someone else jokingly would just be like, ah, oh, you in a big head. And I knew, you know, that might be a joke, but because I understood the impact that those sorts of words had had on me growing up by grown ups around me just joking, I was not about to have it. I was called a drum, you know, growing up. Um, and there was always those comparisons. Did you come from this woman? Because, you know, I didn't have the hips and the blah, 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 blah. You know, that typical Zulu, African, what is it called? Uh, the African trademark, the ATM. I wasn't shaped that way. I grew up to find that, you know, the Bible says that you, a, a body have I formed for you, meaning the assignment that I have is parallel or aligned to the body that I have. I grew up understanding that I was going to have, um, or I came, I did not grow up understanding, but I came to understand eventually that I had a lot of responsibility. And so my shoulders are broad for that. I might not have broad hips, but physically I had broad shoulders, which was a demonstration of the spiritual. I remember my husband tells the story of a, a young lady that he was interested in and he thought you know I'd like to marry her so he prayed about it 
and he sleeps that night and he has a dream and in the dream he sees this young lady with a I'll call it a mantle, uh, let's just say a garment, a coat, you know, and it was a coat specifically made uh, for his wife. And she picked up this mantle, it was by her feet, so she picked it up and she put it on, and she staggered under the weight, she couldn't bear the weight, and she fell under that weight. And he woke up and he interpreted the dream to mean that this person does not have the stature, the stamina, the strength. Um, for what the role of his wife would require, you know, the responsibility that would come with it. And then um, in comes your girl, you know, recommended by the highest. And, um, and I have these broad shoulders in real life, but I had the shoulders to take on the assignment. Who knew that the assignment would be 10 children and, and, and the myriad of other things that we do together, which one day we'll talk about. But um, it, it, I, at a time, I only appreciated my body in its pregnant state. I thought that that was the most beautiful. Number one, because I was carrying life. But number two, because I didn't have to make any apologies for whether there was an extra tire or a muffin top or a, you know, I beat myself over the head for the longest time. And when I grew up and came to understand that the body I have is the body I need, um, and that it housed my spirit, it housed my character, it housed my assignment, my purpose, I began to appreciate it more. Um, as I said, when I had children and I didn't want them looking down on, on what they had, I began to appreciate myself more because I'd be telling them, appreciate yourself, but then I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't appreciate myself, if I didn't see myself as the absolute best for what I needed to be, fearfully and wonderfully made, with care and precision, you know. There was always a comparison. Somebody else was better, someone else was taller, someone else was prettier, someone else was slimmer. And praise God for her. But I also had my errs. I was something er and something er. And at the end it balanced out and we were all equal before the eyes of the Creator. And it took me a long time to get that message. I began to really get it when I started this journey of going back to the beginning. And I'll share that another day my return to the woman of the beginning, you know, um, in the original image and likeness. That's the journey that I'm on. And I shared some of that when I shared about my hair and going back to taking off, um, you know, a lot of the artificial, the relaxing and the, and the human hair, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in my bid to grow my own natural hair, it was part of my going back to the original. So I couldn't just do that with only hair. I had to do that with skin. I had to do that with my face. I had to do that with my body. And here I am with this body. But today we're talking about weight loss because when I turned 41 and it hit me in my 40s was when there was a full appreciation for everything that I, I am satisfied. It took me four decades to get here. And I don't know who else is out there. And it's just, you know, just a bit more this and it'll be okay. Just a little less that and it'll be okay. It took me four decades. I lost weight in 13 days. I went on a 13 day metabolism diet when I was turning 41. I woke up 13 days, it wasn't 13 exactly, it was roughly about, about two weeks, about 14, 15 days prior to my 41st birthday. And I said to myself, I'm gonna gift myself with a healthy body. My present to myself as I turn 41 will be A, to love myself, to be satisfied, to focus on my purpose, um, and to be healthy and strong and fit to be able to do that which I have been called to do. I have 10 biological children. I've had them literally for more than a decade I've been pregnant, you know. Um, and when I would try and lose weight in the past, I would lose the weight and there we go again, you know. So my, my weight was yo-yoing back and forth on account of, of the child bearing. Um, but then this time around, I, I went on and I chose the metabolism diet because I didn't want something where it was gonna be one kilogram a month, one kilogram every two weeks, half a kilo, you know. I didn't want the slow, painful route. Um, I wanted to have a huge impact quickly and then settle down to something that was healthy and sustainable. So the aesthetics are a nice uh, byproduct, but the main focus was the health. With all of the children I've been having, joints would suffer sometimes, bones would suffer sometimes. I have to be really serious with my calcium intake because of course each of these pregnancies, excuse me, has um, depleted my calcium mm -hmm. reserves, so to speak. And so one way that as we grow older, 
to look after our bones and keep osteoporosis at bay is to strengthen our bodies, strengthen our muscles through weight training. And just when I hit that 41, when I crossed over that 40 mark, I was just like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this for me. Will I fall pregnant again? That's, I don't know. And if I do fall pregnant again and I have to gain weight again and lose it again, will that be nice? I think the baby will be worth it, but the process might not be that encouraging, you know, um, having lost all of this weight. But I went on this diet, it's called the metabolism diet, 13 days, and you would eat things like carrots for breakfast and um, tomato and cheese and coffee and spinach and eggs. I like my food, people. I like good food. I like it to taste good. I love to cook. I love to show off with my cooking and um, the heritage that I have, we fry everything. It's fried stew, fri fried everything. And you know, the more oil, the tastier, but that's not healthy. Um, and this body is a seed that I've been given that I must plant back and show a, a mighty harvest, you know. So certain habits are not gonna be healthy for my body, whether it's smoking or drinking, we know what that do does to the, to the inner man. Um, to your lungs and to your cells and to your kidneys and livers, etc., and liver, stomach, etc. So one has to look after oneself um, to be alive, to to look after the family and the assignment and the ministry that one has been given, whatever that ministry is, whether it's a business or a job or a community or an NGO or whatever it might be. You're ministering to those around you, and you have to be healthy to do it. I need to be able to keep this body and be wise with it. So I'm, I'm maintaining this now. Um, those of you who asked what I do, I, I did the metabolism diet for 13 days um, and I lost four kilograms in 13 days. And I was mighty encouraged. I liked what I saw. I liked how I felt and how strong I felt and how involved I could be. Again, I'm not quite there all the way, but um, stronger to be involved with uh, my children, um, homeschooling them, playing with the babies, nursing a baby through the night, getting up to do homeschooling, um, keeping my house. We don't always get that right, but you know what? It's a lived in space. Keeping my house, running this YouTube channel, doing music with my husband, my speaking engagements, my authoring and writing of books, um, etc. So I now. Um, I don't have a cheat meal at the end of the week. I have two cheat days, guys. And it was important for me to be comfortable with this. I didn't want to punish myself. I didn't want it to feel punitive because that's not sustainable. With my kind of personality, the minute I feel as if, you know, something is by force, I remember being little and my, and my mom would come to me and say, kiss, kiss, and I'd ask her, is it by force? Is it by force? You know, I didn't want to kiss on anyone else's terms, but when I wanted to kiss you better, be, I would be like, Sissim, Sissim, and I would hold you till you gave me that kiss. So I had that kind of personality where I had that kind of, again, I always say, thank God for Jesus. I had that kind of personality where it had to be my way, it had to be on my terms. And now, 10 children and a husband, you best believe I've learned to be extremely flexible. Extremely. I've learned to be quite flexible. The first time I went on this diet, my husband had lost his mom and um, he had traveled home to go for the funeral. I couldn't, you know, come through. I couldn't leave the children. I can't remember if I was pregnant at the time. I couldn't go. And so, and, and I just, you know, this person is my better half. My, I feel like he, he has one lung and I have the other and we breathe in unison. And this is the most painful thing to happen in his life and I can't be there. And um, on his return, I mean, yes, I prayed for him and I, I would call and I would say what would come to my mind. What do you say at a time like that? What do you say? But I did the best I could to, to be there for him. And I just thought, you know what? This is a man and, and men are visual creatures. And um, one of the many gifts I will give him is to give him something beautiful to behold. And he could not care less. But I just thought, if I lost this weight, it might be a nice present for him. I mean, I, mean, I, I was at a loss as to what to get. So I lost, he was gone for two weeks, and by the time he came back, he was like, whoa. You know, and this is the body he looks after. If you listen to um, one of the, the first love song he wrote for me, 
uh, called Love Is What It Is. He says, "This is why I wake up in the morning, uh, make breakfast while I'm in bed, and I go and get." And this is literally. It wasn't just lyrics of the song. He would bring me back breakfast in bed um, almost every morning till now. I'm I'm on this weight loss journey and he's like do you mean we can't have breakfast together anymore so that's why I have my cheat days on on both days of the weekend um, but I mean he feeds me and he makes sure my medicine is taken and he checks on he looks after this body I remember one time being pregnant and I used to have bad 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 morning sickness with every bad morning sickness with every pregnancy from from like the beginning to the end I'd be going to deliver the baby and I'd not still have morning sickness but my morning sickness was so bad because it happens before I've eaten. So it pulls in the bile and it's really excruciating. And no matter what he's doing, he would drop, drop it and come and be there so he could rub my back. And I remember this time he had a very important international call. He was on the phone um, with someone on a different time zone and they had to have the call then. And I was in the shower and I didn't know he could hear me. And he heard and he told that person call over I'm done and he ran into the shower fully clothed and stood with me there under this pouring water and just soothed me till the vomiting was over so for me to want to gift him um, a better healthier version of this body that he looks after so diligently I don't think personally this is my body and my business and my marriage I don't think there's anything wrong with it so I did I did the diet that one time when he got back from um, burying his mom and he was blown so we've had another baby or two one I can't remember since then and so I gained weight again and so on my birthday I just thought no I'm doing this for me I'm doing this for my children I'm doing this for my posterity I'm doing this for my health I'm doing this for my husband I'm doing this to feel better doing this for all the people that I love because I want to be around for them much longer so uh, right now what I do is breakfast is it alternates between you know green tea and coffee and coffee I specifically take um, Ganoderma infused coffee and I use a brand called Organo Gold which uses organic uh, Ganoderma lucidum mushroom and organic coffee beans though they're instant. Um, and that's really, really good. It, it heals at a cellular level. It um, detoxes. It's got 400 antioxidants. Um, so you can imagine various angles. It's good for inflammation, so many things. Uh, blood pressure issues, skin listed. So I take that or I'll have green tea for breakfast with brown bread and scrapings of butter. And then for lunch, I'll have fruit. Um, I'm trying to stay away from the dairy which is neither good for my skin or, you know, after I finished the diet, my metabolism readjusted itself. And so certain intolerances began to surface. Um, a lactose intolerance was one of those. So I use lactose-free milk. So I'm very, very careful with the yogurt, though natural yogurt has very um, small traces of lactose in it. And then for dinner, I would have a salad or vegetables with um, steak or fish or chicken. Steamed most times, the steak I'd fry it in its own fat. Um, the difference, that was quite common in the metabolism diet, so we had a lot of the steak, but um, you were not allowed to have any salt, you were not allowed to have any spices, um, no dairy, no sugar. Now I don't torment myself with a tasteless meal. I'm low on the carbs, I'm high on protein, but I make sure that it's, it's, it's nice and tasty. And that's what's working for my body type and my blood type. I exercise as much as I possibly can practically every day of the week. And so um, Saturday and Sunday, Saturday I'll have a nice big breakfast because you know that's our bonding time with hubby. I'd have a nice big breakfast. I'm still low on the carbs, but I go to town on my baked beans and my eggs and um, whatever other proteins on the plate. And when I've had that for breakfast, I'm usually quite full. I wouldn't really need anything else during the rest of the day. And then on Sunday, don't have time for breakfast. Obviously, I can't have lunch. So we'll have a very late lunch when we get back from church. And then I go into the seven colors. Like, I go to town. And I eat a bit of everything I've been craving the whole week. I'm not proud of this, but it's, it's how I cope. Um, so that by Monday, I'm like, whoa, I've got calories to burn people and I work out. So in the next segment, I'm going to be showing you 
my workout routine. As I said, in the first 13 days, I lost four kilograms. That was October, mid-October. We're sitting in mid-November now. And since then, I've lost another three, four. So we're sitting on about between seven and eight kilograms lost in total in the space of about a month. And that's not bad. And I'm now at a place where I sustain it. I can maintain it in a healthy manner. I don't feel cheated. I don't feel punished. I don't feel cranky and angry and hungry all the time. Um, I would like to do the six small meals a day. I don't have the time for that. I can't be constantly, every couple of hours checking. The one thing I make sure I do regularly is I drink water. And I'm not good on all days. But I think my why, my why is strong enough. My reason has stopped being about being aesthetically pleasing to anyone else. Um, it has been about being healthy, liking what I see in the mirror and being satisfied for the first time, first time in, in my life, I've accepted the fact that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I've accepted the fact that I am a beautiful woman and it's, I don't own that just for me. I'm so comfortable with it because I don't know an ugly soul. I don't know one ugly individual. There is nothing that has been created that was made ugly. You've got ugly characters, you've got ugly speech, um, but I don't know any ugly looking people. There might be ugly people who've made themselves ugly or who have been made ugly by the circumstances, the, you know, mitigating circumstances that they found themselves in. And so because they hurt, they tend to hurt other people. But physically, I don't know anything created that is ugly. And, and that was not a difficult concept for me to grab for the longest time. I just could not accept that I was one of the beautiful ones. Can you get that? I could not accept that I was one of the beautiful ones. I would have to stand in front of the mirror for hours and add on and take off and mold and suck in and tuck in and then I'd be like, okay, now we're all right. And I'm not there anymore. And maybe it's a factor of age. Uh, maybe it's a factor of knowing that I have children who I have to send the same message to. But I think most importantly, it was just allowing myself to go back to the original formation, to what was made. I mean, literally peeling off the extra lashes and taking off oodles of makeup and just being satisfied. And that was more internal than it was external, you know. And I'm not trying to make myself naked or seek pity here. It might not be your story. And if you've always been just like happy with who you are and not needing the filter, good on you. And I want you to take that attitude and imbibe it into someone else. Make someone else feel good. Make someone else feel strong. Make someone else feel beautiful. Because your greatness is in your greatness is measured by how much of it you can rub off to the next person. If people come out of your space and they feel belittled and they feel small and they feel like, oh, she's the great one, I'm not. And let me let you know something, you're not great. You're feeding off of their greatness. That's what you're doing. And they're just not wise enough to see it. But if people come out of your space and they feel like I felt like I was the only person in the room at that time, she had only eyes for me, then you're great. And your success is already uh, halfway there. So, you know, we're talking beauty, but then we end up talking life and all things deep. But that is life of interruption. So, stay tuned and we're going to exercise together. I'm going to take you through what I do every day. I exercise for about 45 odd minutes. Um, I do a combination of weight training and cardio. Mix it up, get my heart rate up there, sweat a bit. I'm not certain that my form is right. And so if any of you see the exercises and you're like a certified physiotherapist or you know instructor or whatever and you're like ah you're holding those weights wrong please in the comment box just correct me i'm open for correction but i don't have the time to get in a car drive to a gym do the exercises and drive back that drive time would be nice away time but it's too much time for me to take off for my responsibility so what i do have is the 45 minutes to an hour that i steal away and i exercise sometimes i'll exercise literally like um, 11 p.m. you know just to the midnight gate um, and sometimes I do it after school I've not been able to get up and do it in the morning after a night of, of nursing a baby I'm not there yet the time is coming
buffalo soldiers making strides in the diaspora. I salute the African soldiers for hundred years no retreat, no surrender. They took you from the land of Africa, we chains up pain to commit that murder. Call your names, threw you to the fire, but I could never stop your desire. You were born to be great leaders, many rivers can't put off your fire. Now it's time to show your power, Africa rise, this is your hour. journey step by step. I've got a goal to reach by December. We're entering into 2020 on another trajectory, people. Um, some weight I'd like to lose by December, and I'll just keep checking in here, and you just see the before and the after pictures. I'm not going to tell you what the weight is, how much I lost, how much I weigh, but I'll tell you how much I've lost per time. You can just see the features and let me know if you see the improvement, see the changes. Let's not call them improvement, if you see the changes. Because the improvement is more in the character, um, in the spirit of a person, and in the strength. And you can't see my strength from there. But I know that I'm more available for my children. I can throw them in the air, I can play, I can run around. Um, I can attempt to do headstands with the boys. Oh Lord, I tried the other day. Yo, my neck, it's just like, girl, you're not a youngin anymore, you know, grow up. But those sorts of fun things, you know, know that I'll be around to see my children, their children, and heaven knows how much further. So it's been fun. Bless you. Love you.